when we talked about create table statement, we mentioned that for each column, you need to define a data type. Uh, but at that time, we just uh, briefly told, talks about this data type and didn't go, to in, go into detail. And the reason we didn't go into detail is not because it's not important. Instead, data type is probably one of the most important thing when you, can, when you define a column. Um, so that's why we have a dedicated session to talk about this data type. What does uh, data type do? When you define a column, <coughs> when you define a data type for a column, you basically defines what value the column can hold and what operations can be performed. For example, uh, as you look at these two names, sales and course name, apparently you can, uh, each of them has their own characteristics and each of them has their specific um, operations. For sales, you can sum up Right. You can divide it by uh, quantity or something like this. Um, but for course name, of course, you cannot sum them up, but you can definitely do some search on, uh, let's say, data science or computer science. Rather, you cannot search something like the computer science or the data science for sales. So this is basically determined by their data type. Their data type determines what value they can hold and what operations can be performed. And inside the database, it also defines how this column is stored and what's the size of it. So it is go deep to the hardware part, which we are not going to discuss in this session, in this class, but uh, which is also equally important to those who actually work as an administrator of a database. Common data type includes numerical values like a decimal integer or text strings and uh, date and time. I think we can, we should start with a good, very good example. This is a deposit slip from my local bank. Uh, I actually picked that up from the branch. Uh, I think this is a wonderful example of a variety of data types. So it has name, address. Uh, apparently these are text strings and it also have the date, right? I don't need to say what it is. And it has a signature, it has telephone, the telephone and zip code, these are like a fixed length. Name, the, uh, the, the, the length of the name may be different, but the zip is always five digit and telephone is always 10 digit. And then it has an account, uh, account number. Account number also have a fixed uh, amount. Then we also have the dollar amount here. So let's go through different data types one by one. Then the first thing we look at is the decimal value, which is the numbers. The numbers like cash, check, total deposit here. As you can see, we have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten space. Each space contains one um, contains one digit, one number. Uh, sometimes it can be blank, right? It can be one hundred ninety nine dollars. $100.99, which means $100.99. But whatever it is, it has a fixed length or width of the total fields. And it has the fixed amount of digital, uh, digital place. So when you define, when you write like 10099, you know this 100 belongs to the integer part and the 99 belongs to the decimal part. So in database, how do we define this? We define this with something called decimal. And uh, you basically decimal, D-E-C-I-M-A-L is the keyword. You write decimal as is, then followed by a parenthesis. Inside the parenthesis, you define two things. One is precision, one is scale. Precision is the total width of this data type. Let's say I have a, the previous one, we have a 10 space, which means that the precision was 10. Here in this example, we have seven space, which means the precision is seven. And scale is the number of uh, decimal places. Here we have a two. Normally uh, for numerical, for, for, for dollar, for currency is two, right? So sales amount, for example, is a decimal seven two. But of course, sometimes you can have a dec uh, decimal place of zero, which means it actually is an integer. So there will be a number of customers, decimal five zero. Of course, number of that's the customers will be integer. You won't you won't have like one third of a customer showing up, right? So 
common usage, of course, is currency, percentage, everything you can do, you can put an arithmetic operation on. Um, and usually uh, for currency scale is two, percentage defined um, for the percentage, depending on what you use. It can be two, it can be 10, it can be anything you want. Now, we also mentioned that if the decimal, if the decimal place is uh, zero, then it actually is an integer. This is a very common usage, right? We frequently see like quantity of items sold, number of days, these are integer numbers. In fact, the integer usage is so common that we create a data type for it. It's just integer, I-N-T-E-G-E-R. Or sometimes you can put I-N-T for short. This can be regularly used for anything like age, number of days, quantity of the items sold. It can also be used as a primary key because low because the uh, integer in general has the lowest storage cost and the best performance out of all the data types. Now, some common mistakes. Uh, I want you guys to read through this carefully and don't make mistake. First of all, a lot of students, when they start using integer or decimal, they add a quote, either single quote or double quote around it. That's wrong. Second, you should not write comma or dollar sign or currency sign in front of, uh, together with the decimal numbers. The only thing you should have is numbers and the decimal, uh, decimal point, all right? This is the formatting issue. Now there are some numerical uh, calculation issue. Remember this decimal, we always have uh, precision. We have, we have the width. So if you, if you try to put something that is above and beyond its width into this decimal uh, data type, you will run into an error. For example, if you try to insert this value, one, two, three, four, five, six, point seven, eight, which have eight digit in total into this decimal seven, two, you will have an overflow issue. Now, there's also another issue is equally bad, but even, maybe probably even worse, which is loss of current, uh, loss of accuracy. When you have more decimal place than what is defined, for example, here, I'm inserting this value with a decimal 0 0.78 into a decimal 70. Database will ignore this 78. It will only insert this one, two, three, four, five, six, well, probably with the rounding probably with a, <clears throat> with a flooring or ceiling. But the key is this part, the accuracy will get lost. And if it's a decimal seven two, uh, seven one is similar. You will, uh, if it's seven one, DBMS will cut off this eight and probably with um, one word forward. And the worst part of this issue is that this will not result in the execution failure. Rather it will go unnoticed. So when you design a data type, when you design decimal, always try to in be inclusive, include all the extreme cases. If you, uh, the, if you see, uh, you think potentially it can go to like three digit, use three digit, uh, three decimal digit. Otherwise, you may lost accuracy unnoticed. Similarly, we have some common mistakes for integer. Of course, common size and uh, single quote or double quote. These are all wrong. And uh, of course, if it's integer, don't put decimal points. Now, the other part of the other important data type is uh, text or string or character. There are two types of text. Some texts are uh, com comes with a fixed length. For example, account ID or zip code is either five or nine. State code, like NJ for New Jersey, CA for California, it will be two digit. And license plate, depending on where you are, seven digit, seven, seven space or eight. These are called char, C-H-A-R, which is short for character. Another type of text is a, a text with varying length. The length can be different from place to place. Name, address, City, for example, in New Jersey, there's a town called Edison, uh, which is six digit. There's also some town called South, uh, South uh, Susquehanna. I didn't even bother to count how long it is, but 
apparently the length is different from Edison, and we should be able to handle both. And we should also expect that how no matter how much we define, there may be some new names that will go beyond what we define. That's when we try to when we use this data type called the var char, which is a varying char, varying length char. Char has a fixed length, while var char has a varying length up to the defined scope. And the fixed length columns should use char, and the varying length should use var char. Now, there's a quick question regarding um, data type of uh, some all numerical fields like social security number, phone number, and zip code. Should that be char or integer? Now, in the old days, when database storage was expensive, people tend to store them as integer to save some space. But these days, as the storage is cheap, people start to use that as a char because they want to perform certain kind of a search. For example, phone number with uh, uh, some like 908 or 201 to begin with, or zip code with certain digit. General guideline is that if a column cannot or should not be summed up, it should be text. If you are not expecting any um, arithmetical operation on that, you should define this as a chart. For example, what's the sum of a zip code or social security that never mean? What can you get by summing up all the zip code in Jersey? You're not getting anything meaningful, right? So general rule, if you cannot perform operation, uh, mathematical operation, define this as a char, because char operations are usually more flexible. Now, text is usually defined with a size, like char five or bar char 100. Char five means everything, every value will have five, uh, five space. Bar char 100 means everything in every value in this column will have up to 100. It can be zero, it can be one, it can be up to 100, but it cannot go beyond it. For char five, every value in that will have a length of five. If the input value is less than the width, in char five, database in char's case database will fill in spaces in the rest of for the rest of the characters for example if we, we define a chart 10 i insert a jedi g i j e d i four digit when i insert this value into chart 10 then database will add up six extra spaces to make it 10 digit uh, 10 10 space but if it's a var chart when it's Jedi, it's Jedi. It's a four digit, uh, four, four, four values, um, four characters, and the database is not going to add things to it. But when you insert like a dark side, eight digit, uh, eight characters, database will, will put the eight characters there here, uh, too. Unless you insert something like Varchar 10, they will be Varchar 10. Of course, if you, yourself insert a space after Jedi, database will accept that too. So let's say you, you insert G -I J E D I space, then it will be a five character string stored in database. Now, we use single quote to delimit uh, strings. Single quote, um, it's used to delimit a string, it's not a part of a string content. So things like this, all these three values, their value are all four digit, uh, four character is C I T Y. There's no single quote in this uh, in this string. Single quote is only used to delimit the st uh, string. Inside the string, it's case sensitive. So this C Y T I is C I T Y is different from this C I T Y and different from this C I T Y because they have different cases. Now, if you want to include a single quote inside a, a string when you write it you write double single quotes two single quotes to tell database that you are actually trying to put one single quote for example if i'm trying to type this into database i'm happy what i'm going to do i need to use single quote around it to delimit this string but 
for whatever was single quote, I will put two single quotes. So this is only um, effective inside the SQL, but once I finish insert inside database, it will be one single quote. It will be I single quote am happy. The common mistakes, forget single quote. And interestingly, uh, those who forgot single quote tend to be the same people who keep on adding quotes to decimal and integer. So I hope you guys can fix that <clears throat> once for all. Single quote for bar char and char, and no quotes for decimal and integer. Now use double quote as a delimiter is wrong. You should not use double quote. Now, and the third thing is the most common thing actually, is you use the wrong character set of quotes when copying from rich format text editor, such as Word or Outlook. So see that I, uh, uh, I intentionally make this in large font so that you can see clearly. This single quote is different from this single quote, right? This is the plain text single quote. When you open up a notepad, bring a notepad here and you type in a single quote from your keyboard, this is the plain text single quote. But if you are using a text editor such as uh, Outlook or Word, for example, here I'm using Google PowerPoint for Google Slide. I put a single quote here. Note the note here how it's different from the plain text single quote. This is a rich format single quote. So when you copy, your SQL between rich, rich format text editor and uh, your SQL client. Remember this, SQL client only recognizes plain text single quote as the string delimiter. A lot of people, when they copy a SQL from their email, they fail, <coughs> their SQL will fail because their text editor, their email editor will, will, will convert single quote, this plain text single quote to rich format by default. So this is one thing you need to recognize. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you will run into this issue because every, uh, you know, no matter how much I stress on that, every semester, some students will fall into this pitch. Okay, now let's talk about the third important date type, which is a uh, date time. Because basically everything happens in a certain date and time. Everything exists in a certain date and time. So. In the real world, you can see this date-time column. There are some date-time column in, in basically every table. The date-time is as simple as that, right? We are all familiar with that. But one thing to note that is when we say time in our common English, what we really mean is a date and time. When I say, I want to meet you at uh, seven o'clock, what I mean is I want to meet you at seven o'clock in a certain day. When I say this class starts at 6 p.m., what I mean is this class starts at 6 p.m. of a certain Wednesdays or Tuesdays or Mondays, right? So it is the date and time combination that, that we really mean, referring to when we say time in common English. In databases, we call this timestamp. It's a combination of date and the time. And for all these three, date, time, timestamp, we use single quote around the value. And as, again, it should be plain text quote, single quote. Uh, Google slide automatically converted that to a rich format text, a rich format single quote. So if I copy this into a SQL editor, I will, it will fail. It will give me an error message because this is a rich format single quote. Now, there's one thing special about date time is that it has a different time zones and date format. If you think about this uh, physical world, this earth, time in our world, in, in the classic phys physical world, is uh, one point, right? It's a one X where you uh, X where you get the infinite points, which are like time. As I say that, this thing that I'm saying something happens in the physical time. This uh, one physical time is universal, ubiquitous around all Earth. 
in the whole universe. However, depending where you are, you may use different labels for this time, for this physical time. I'm in New York. I'm using Eastern Standard Time and someone in California using Pacific Time. It will be 7 a.m. for me, but 4 a.m. for this person, Pacific Time person, right? Or maybe even a different day in some other part of the world. So this is time zone, but remember this is always one physical time spot, time point. This is what is stored in the database. Daytime, timestamp data are stored in standard format, universal format in database. But when you try to utilize that, when you try to use that in your SQL, it's your local SQL setting that de determines what time zone it is and what date format it will be using. We use, in our class, we use the US format, and uh, in some part like UK, they use UK format and some part in East Asia, they use this format. The usually goes with your local machine setting. Most of us will be using US Eastern time, but uh, it's too complex to summarize in a class. So it's a good practice. You always test some scenarios when you set up your client. And finally, we have this field signature. What is a signature? Signature definitely is not a string, right? It's actually a graph, a chart that I draw based on my habit. So this is a typical example of image. There are things that is not, um, and is not like, um, does not have a clear meaning in the single byte. Rather, it's binary, like image, like audio, like video. These are usually stored as the binary field or a file in a database. This is also an important part of data storage, but this is beyond what we will be discussing. So we're not going to talk about this in our class. Um, finally, we have been talking about size. We have been talking about using a parenthesis and uh, precision or scale or text size, called text field width in the parenthesis to indicate what's the largest size you will have for that field. But if you don't specify that, database will give you a default size. If you don't specify the width, you just put a char, then it's equivalent to chart one. But if you don't specify the width for var char, it's not one. The default size is not one. It's up to the implementation limit. And implementation limit may change from version to version. So, just uh, make sure that uh, you, you are aware of the your particular implementation limit is. Similarly for decimal place, the for decimal, if you don't specify, it will be up to the limit of that current version. But that being said, you should specify the size, even though you don't have to. Because first of all, this behavior is actually limited to Postgres. Other database, the other DBMS may be different. So if you define this var char, uh, assuming this will give you the maximum limit and you migrate your SQL, you try to run your SQL in another database, another DBMS, you may run into errors. So for this reason, we should avoid specifying this, uh, using the default size. And also even inside, if you think about this, even inside the uh, Postgres, you can you, you might it may lead to confusion and wrong assumption. Default char is one, default var char is unlimited. If I used to define this as a var char and I decide to change this to char, it will be very easy for me to fail because I'm changing the behavior, right? So always try to specify the size, even though you don't have to, even though you can use the default size.